Hello everyone, welcome to Feature Friday. We'll get started here in just a moment. We've got three more minutes to go. And we'll have some fun tonight. Hope everyone's had a wonderful week. <clears throat> and I had planned on being on earlier this week. But this <clears throat> flu that I've had, that we have had, it came back to knock me down for a couple of days. I'm feeling much better now, so well, we're here for tonight. We're, I'm calling this a marathon night because we're gonna. We're, I'm gonna be on here for a while, trying to get as many of these quilt blocks done as I can for the French roses. This is a French roses episode three for our workshop. We'll get started here in about two more minutes. LMC, Happy New Year! Happy New Year to all! Oh my goodness! What a beautiful, beautiful, so we've had some really great weather this last week, but we are going in the deep freeze come next week. We're gonna have single digits here. Woohoo! <laughs> I think it's forecast we're gonna have like an inch of snow over the next 48 hours. Let's hope that stays true. <laughs> and let's see, we have one more minute to go and we'll get started everybody. Let's try that. It looks like my speaker, my mic game is really high so I'm lowering that just a little bit so it doesn't peg out. It should be much better on everybody. About right there. That should be pretty good. <clears throat> Hi, Christina. Hi, Janelle. Yes, Janelle, the cold is coming. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Now, Christina, she doesn't have to worry about that. She lives in some of the south, one of the southern states where it's nice and warm. But listen, everybody, we're going to get started. Tonight is episode three of our French Roses workshop. And I'm calling tonight a marathon. I'm going to be on here until I just can't do it anymore because I'm, I'm just working on these blocks. I have. Here's our blocks. I have one, two, three, four, six of 25 blocks done. Okay, so I'm gonna get as many of these done as I can stand to. <laughs> I'm gonna have the camera on my machine. I'm just gonna go for it. Chat me up in the window. I will keep my eye on it. I love taking any distraction is a good thing. <laughs> Okay, that being said, I want to show you one thing, I, what, one of my thrift store finds, check it out, isn't it a cute basket? <laughs> Love it! <laughs> I think it was like a dollar or something like that, it's a nice little basket, and I'm using it for thread. This has become a thread basket in my sewing room. So I have a bunch of really cool threads down in there, some metallics, some hollow holographic thread from Superior, just some fun stuff. And it's just a nice little, little way to keep yourself organized. Okay, all of that being said, I'm gonna swap the camera and we're gonna get started on our blocks. LMC, I am using the Bernina 475 Quilters Edition, and which is the special, and it's the special CAFE um, edition. Let me swap my camera over and I'll give you a peek.
Okay, I have sound there that should be picking up on the other camera, but it's not. So I'm going to change a couple of settings, everybody, so hold on. sound working right there for everyone. I'll tell you what, that's better. Hold on, let me try something else here. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. 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 Okay. Test. Oop, there we go. It's back up. That should have fixed it right there, everybody. Testing, one, two, three. Hello, audio. Yep, that's got the, the sound bar moving where it should be. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> But that should be back to where the sound was originally. And we're going to get started here on this. So let's get to moving. I'm just going to pick up my stacks. These are my appliques for each block. And I'm just going to I have a whole stack of them. These are all of my appliques. There's enough here for 25 total blocks. So I'm just going to start going for it. Just going to go for it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm going to get that positioned. Position my leaf. Put a pin in my leaf to hold it in place. I'm going to use a straight stitch with a length of 1.8 millimeters. That's a beautiful machine, Christina. And I bought I brought this machine home from Florida last March from Flash. That's where this machine came from. Okay. Hi, Coralie. Welcome. Hi, Sarah. And I'm just going to stitch a quarter inch away from the raw edge of the fabric all the way around. Approximately. I'm not going to like measure it with a ruler or anything. No need for that. Because this is going to be one of those raw edge appliques that, fr that is supposed to fray like a rag quilt. <laughs> Excuse me. Then we'll put this back on. Then we'll go all the way around.
use that one. And remember, I'm going to trim the excess fabric off the block at every step. Gotta get them separated so when I make that snip, I don't snip all the way through to the front. There we go. The fold of the fabric is at the end of my fingernail right there. So it tells me how deep I can snip. I'm just gonna trim it on the back side a quarter inch away from that that line of stitching that I just completed. And yes, these trimmings can be used to make a future another cool top with for applique. So I will have all my scraps from this project put into its own little container. So when I do get ready to make another one, I'll have some of the pieces already ready to go. Woohoo! There we go. Okay. Now we'll just turn it back right side up and we'll do the next layer. Now after you do a couple of them, it's really fairly easy just to sit here and, and knock it out. Just keep, keep on keeping on. But it is important <clears throat> that you lower your stitch length for this step because then when it's longer and that begins to ravel and fray, it's going to hold that piece nice and secure to the other layers. Trim this out. You know, this for me, because <laughs> I don't have the best dex dexterity in my fingertips, this is the hardest part for me on making this. Is this just getting a hold of those pieces of fabric to separate them so I can make that first step. Come on you, cooperate. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. There we go. <coughs> you want to make it a little snippy? And these are those per, uh, Buckley's Perfect Scissors. One of my, for doing all kinds of detail work, they are some of my favorite scissors that I own. They come in, I think I have, have them in like six different sizes also. When I'm traveling and teaching, I go to a shop, I always, that's how I end up with so many, I actually, just end up getting a pair at 
the shops I teach at until I have the whole set, which is kind of how I do that. And I'm the world's worst for laying down a pair of scissors and misplacing them. So I just make sure I have plenty and <laughs> then when the time comes, and I have to clean the studio, I'll find all my scissors. Sometimes they're buried under fabric or books or all that fun stuff. Okay. Next. I feel this step was a lot easier. I pre-organized all of my stacks out on a large table and pinned each, each unit together for each block. And that just takes away a lot of, I feel that, that was really beneficial because I didn't have to sit here at the machine and try to decide what color I was going to use next and all that stuff. I already had all that decided before I ever brought my pieces to the machine to stitch, to stitch out. thread tail there. Snip. All I'm doing <clears throat> when I get back to my starting point, I'm just stitching over my line of stitching three or three, four or five stitches. Then I don't have to do any back tacking or anything. There we go. And I decided I'm gonna let <laughs> I'm let my thumbnails grow out just a little bit because that would certainly make this doing this snippy thing a whole lot easier. I had my, my nails trimmed really close. There we go. Trimmy, trim, trim. Okay, got one more piece for this block. Okay. Oh my goodness, Sarah. <laughs> it's a good thing that, that those things didn't cut, cut your, your puppy. My goodness, sometimes they just don't know when to leave well enough alone. But it probably saw you use them a lot and they had your scent on them and that's why it wanted to play with them. I'm sure.
first one of the night done. Woohoo! Oops, I'm gonna trim my excess off the back of that too. No, but I've really been under the weather this week. But I just can't shake that Christmas bug that we had. Come on, fabric. Come on. You know you want to. Here we go. Sarah, the only way Puffin would actually grab a pair of my scissors if he, if he could smell chicken on them. <laughs> If he smelled food on them, yeah, they'd be goners I mean, if he could get to them. Yes, Puffy, I'm talking about you, Bobo. Okay. There we go. There's another one. Woohoo. Okay. I've even thought about maybe using pinking shears to trim the raw edges with of the appliques before I sewed them on. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to. I was thinking of like pinking all of these edges, but I didn't. Maybe in a future one, I'll experiment and try that and see how it turns out. I might make like four blocks, make four blocks and make a, um, yes, Christina, that's what I'm doing. I am trimming the backs so it's not too thick, exactly. But what I think I'll do to experiment after I get this one done, I'm going to make four blocks to make one throw pillow out of, and I'm going to pink the edges before I sew them on and see what that looks like. I actually have a rotary cutter. Come on. I have a rotary cutter that does that, so I don't have to have actual pinking shears. But that'd be an, an experimental piece. Let's call it that. Let's see here. This one will have two leaves on it. There we go. thread trimmed off of there. I probably could have left that, but little stuff like that just kind of drives me nuts. 
So I just have to go ahead and do the trimming. <laughs> okay. It's going to sway some. There we go. Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to trim those little sharp points right there. Get a bigger pair of scissors for that. It'll make it smoother. <laughs> good. Oops, you know what I didn't do? I did not trim the back of that, but I caught it in time. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to rip that out real quick since it's not much. There we go. Now let's trim that fabric off the back of it. Now then, now we can get 
get this one started again. Okay. Hi Donna, good evening. Okay, yeah, we'll trim that one. Trimming off the excess fabric off of the back of the block. So it's not so thick. Alrighty. Oh, wonderful, Sarah. Yeah, this this pattern is actually made by Heather French. Here it is, Heather French. These have been this is pattern's been out for a while because I bought this. This pattern was included in a quilt kit I purchased in Georgia, gosh, at least six or seven years ago. Down, little shop down by Savannah, Georgia. Beautiful little shop. Beautiful shop, super nice people. Let's get this one sewn down. See me stop like right now. I'm using my knee lift to raise that presser foot so I can rotate it. And also, if you start to get a wrinkle in your fabric, by raising that presser foot and lowering it, it will actually smooth any any little bubbles that are trying to appear or pleats. There's actually an, a set of AccuQuilt dies that we cut out something very similar to this. Not exactly, but very similar. If you happen to have AccuQuilt, you wouldn't have to trace everything out and then cut out your patterns. <clears throat> if you had that, I think it's the pomegranate die, I think. There's, there's another one. I can't think of the name of it off my top of my head. 
Rose of Sharon, that's it. The Rose of Sharon dies by AccuQuilt would make something very similar to this. <coughs> Excuse me. And it would certainly make cutting out all the pieces super duper easy. Oh, come on, you. I'm going to go back to my straight pin method. That is actually easier than the tweezers. I mean, I've really got it quick that way. So we'll start using a straight pin to separate the back from the front. Here another piece. We got one more to stitch down and trim. Then this block will be done. That'll be two for tonight. Yeah, if you didn't have to do, if you didn't have to trim all underneath, this would assemble really super fast. Oh, wonderful, Sarah. So you could actually make one of these type of quilts using that dot, Rose of Sharon dot. If you wanted to. another one. Let's get another one done. Next on the price is right is this one. I'm going to press that. There's a there is a crease line from a bolt of fabric right there. If you can see that, there you can see that crease. I'm going to have to press that one, so I'm going to put this one aside for later. If I have them pinned, the pieces pinned to a back sheet, it, I'm going to have to do some pressing before I can stitch it together. So I'll put that back to the press pile. And that one definitely, it's got a big wrinkle in it. That uh, had to be pressed. <laughs> Woo! Here we go. This one does not have to be pressed. Do you think the duckbill scissors would be better? I've got, God, I got several pair of those. So I have to think where they're at. 
Duck bills are great if you're getting up real close to the stitching, which we're not doing that on this. We'll leave a quarter inch. Okay, there's that and that. About right there, that looks good. Okay, let's get those pinned down. stitch those two leaves down. Tails. Okay. Let's see. Here we go, right there. It's too close right there. which way I want that. Right there. Right there, I'm going to call it right there. This first layer is the easiest one to stitch down. Simply because you don't have any sharp, really super sharp curves, not like in the smaller pieces. I think I just ran out of bobbin. I sure did. <laughs> okay, let's cut that off. Pretty sure I ran out of the bobbin right there. Yep, I did. So here is where my bobbin's at, right here. I just push on a little lever on the bobbin case, and it popped out. They're super easy to lay. Oh, I still have thread left. See there? Some. The shiny side on the bobbin, the little metal pieces, they go in first.
Here we go. Often super easy to put in and take out, which is a good thing. Oh, that was not my bobbin, my upper thread, it broke. That's what it was. Okay. So we'll just get this needle re-threaded. There we go. And we can get going again. <clears throat> now I've taken a COVID quest. Quest. I've done my COVID tests for like once a week for three weeks, and it has not came back positive. So I know I don't have that, and I honestly I've had COVID before. And I was way sicker than this. I think I just have an old-fashioned case of the flu. over it for the most part but boy howdy I felt good for a couple of days over the weekend but come come Monday it came back in full force Monday night into Tuesday it came back strong <laughs> it is what it is it's all good give me a straight pin Come on, you. There we go. You know, you might be wondering, well, gosh, I wonder how, how well that would hold up. <clears throat> but I will tell you, once it's quilted, um, it's, it'll hold up for a, it'll really hold up well. Because the quilting stitches will ha help anchor all this stuff down in, in addition to all of these other stitches I'm doing right now. <clears throat> Let's do the next layer.
Alrighty. Then we'll do our little trimmy trim. Just snipping away here, everybody. Snippy, snip, snip. Okay. Got two more pieces on this block to go. Now, next Friday night, <clears throat> I'll be working on the borders for this one because I am going to finish off all of these blocks off camera. And next Friday night, we're going to set all the blocks together and start work on the borders. I think I've done enough of these on camera, so... Yeah, you'll be able to do, if you're going to make one, you shouldn't, there's plenty of video right now on this process we're doing here, and you've seen some of the not really super long challenges, hard challenges, or anything like that, but you've seen what's been going on, and I'm hoping to do some midday live streams between now and next Friday. <clears throat> if I talk too much, which you know, if you know me, you know I can do that. Yeah, my voice is already trying to go tonight. Blah, blah, blah. But we're going to take a look. Once I finish this block, we're going to take a look 
at how we're going to do the, the, the multiple borders on it. Sarah, there are 25 blocks for this for, to make it like it is in the pattern. You could make it as big as you wanted to just by adjusting the amount of your blocks. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to make a big, big one, instead of doing five by five, I would probably do something more like nine by nine or 10 by 10. I'd say nine by nine with a border would make a, it'd make a king size quilt. So that would be 81 blocks. The great thing about it, <clears throat> if you have scraps, you could use scraps to make a lot of these appliques with and use up your, your scrap stash if you wanted to. Okay. There's that. There we go. There's another one. Let's trim that excess fabric off, though, while I'm remembering. Okay. Definitely the pin, straight pin works better than the tweezers, everyone. To separate those layers. Or at least it does for me, anyway. Now, we we're talking about duck bill scissors earlier. If you're doing applique where you're going to cover the raw edges with stitches, I'm not doing that on this, but if you were, that's where the duckbill applique scissors come in super handy because you can use that so that it trims the fabric right up to that line of stitching. Virtually right up against the stitching it will trim. That's what duckbill scissors are normally used for. Okay, there's that one. Ooh, we're hitting a pile here. That's a good thing. So... Where are those instructions? You can see here on this picture, it's got a, there's the piecing, then the next border is a pieced border. It looks like piece squares. And then it's got, this would be for me, for I'd use the same as my background fabric here for this outer border. And then it's got some of this fabric for the binding as well. So, let me get my other instruction sheet, and we're going to have a look at that. Oh, my goodness. Let's see, here we are. And... Gonna go to our other camera. Hello there. Okay. Linda, I am just going to quilt it just an all over meander is what I'm going to do. That's at least that's what I'm thinking right now. Who knows once I get there. <laughs> Might want to do something a little more fancy. I don't know. But we'll see. It'll talk to me once I get it into the long arm into the frame. So, for the borders. Inner border strips, three and a half by 27. So we're gonna, cut, we're gonna strip piece these and cut them so that I'm not going to cut out individual three and a half inch squares in my little quilt kit here. Okay. Here is the fabric that was provided for the piece borders. Oops. Get back in there, you. There you go. Okay. And you. 
So here's all the, it's the same fabric that's in the, the appliques. So all it's gonna do technically, these are three and a half inch strips. So you're gonna sew this size squares together and it'll be like a pieced, piece squares all the way around the edge of it. That was, is what this will do. And then about a six inch, let's see what the instructions call for. I'd say prob probably about a six inch border for the outside. Four and a half, three and a half. Well, in the instructions, it's a four and a half inch outer border. Let's see here. Let me swap to this other camera and you can see what I'm looking at. Let's go back to this one. Okay. So let's see, there's, here's your layout diagram right here where my thumb's at. 25 blocks, pieced inner border, and then a plain outer border. Ground squares, outer borders, bar, inner borders, binding, adding. Yeah, so it says the the quilt size is approximately fifty-seven by fifty-seven after quilting, binding, and then washing and drying in a hot dryer several times. That's how you get the edges to fray, is by washing and drying the finished quilt in a hot dryer. What I'm looking for is the actual cutting instructions for that border. Because I might change that from four and a half to six inches, I don't know. Here we go. Yes, the outer borders are four and a half. And the inner border is strip piece from three and a half inch strips for all the little squares that are, that are sewn around that. Okay. Hello there. So what I am going to do, this is a good guide. Okay, that's how I view these. This is a blueprint to get you into the right direction. But what I'm going to do, once I have my 25 blocks pieced, I'm going to measure it. And then I will use that number to determine how many and how large of, of squares for the pieced inner border. So if it's a three and a half inch cut, that means the squares will finish at three inches square. So whatever number that quilt top is, it's got to be evenly divisible by three. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have to do some math on that one. We'll be doing all that fun stuff next Friday. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but all in all, it's it's coming. It seems like it's coming together nicely, and I'm debating. I may set the blocks together with my serger. I think next Friday night I'm gonna use the serger. Once I get the blocks done, then the rest of it can be assembled using a serger. And I'm gonna use a serger to do that with. Okay. Set that to the side. Woohoo! <laughs> Good coffee. 
Ooh wee, and I yes, I did make a big pot of chicken noodle soup. I got some frozen chicken out of the freezer. I mean, frozen ch whole frozen chicken like you have to cut up to make um, chicken noodle soup with. But oh my gosh, <clears throat> it's been a rough one. <laughs> Well, Christina, that's one thing I love about making quilts. I love math. <laughs> so that part is one of my favorite parts to do. <laughs> and actually, I will show everybody a piece of software I use that helps me figure that out. I use EQ8, Electric Quilt, to help me with the math because, and I will just, that's something we'll do next Friday night. We'll take a look at EQ8 and I'll show you how I use it to figure out actual border lengths. It make it, you don't have that does all the math for you. <laughs> Which is really nice. I can do it on paper as well, but it's a cool piece of software if you've never used it. Go to YouTube or it's called electric quilt it's quilt design software and I, I whenever i've made like a show quilt um i use electric quilt to do all my designing with because i can actually see the actual finished quilt what it will look like using the actual fabric that i'm going to use in it before i cut a piece of fabric which is pretty cool Thank you, Christina. It just, it just, it is what it is. I definitely feel better than I did two weeks ago, but. Oh, wow, Sarah, I used EQ5 too, but that was quite some time ago. <laughs> I love Electric Quilt. It's a wonderful tool. Especially if you like using, say, fabrics like Kaif or Tula or some of the higher end quilting fabrics that are, let's just say they're not, they're not cheap to buy. You know, you're going to spend some money for good, good fabric like designer fabric like that. It's always nice to see what that quilt's going to look like using your designer fabric before you cut any of it. Because it can just change up everything as to what you want to do. Let's see. What else did I get done this week? I actually got, I finished today. I did, okay, everybody, listen to what I'm saying. I did some hand sewing today. <laughs> I made an OB belt. Come on up. Mm, kimono belt. I'm going to go get it off of my, my dress rack over there. Hold on. Now this I actually used sewing machine, my Sashiko machine, and some hand stitching <laughs> to make this one. It's about 108 inches long. I mean, it's big. Here, this is double folded. But there you go. Let me just come back some and get a better, a better sense of that this way, perhaps. There we go. There it is. And that's a double fold. Oops. Right there, right there, okay. <clears throat> and it's double-sided, so there's the right side. I call this the back side because there's the seam in it where I made a tube. But what I did, I used a serpentine stitch and a Sashiko stitch to make this entire thing. Check out my stitching. 
and I use this beautiful lavender plum variegated thread. That's what it really made an interesting secondary pattern where the white hit on these different rows of stitching. And isn't my hand stitching pretty? <laughs> <laughs> it looks look at that if you didn't know it and if I hadn't told you that I used the baby lock Sasha Co machine to make to do that stitching you'd swear I was an expert hand hand quilter by looking at that right <laughs> but it's all good now you've on each end because this was a two, I sewed it this way, turned it inside out, then I had a, a long tube, then I pressed it, and I I'm not afraid or embarrassed to show my hand sewing. <laughs> right there, I closed the gap with hand stitches, and I'm gonna see if you can get to see some of, oh, you can see those, there they are. And I use that same variegated thread That's all hand stitching right here along this very edge. I'm getting giddy. <laughs> and my hands are cramping. <laughs> but I had a customer in the shop today and Mike was sharpening her scissors. So we sat at the table and chit chatted while I did my hand sewing. <laughs> OB belt back up. There we go. But this is all the 100% cotton fabric. But there it is. I'm rather proud of that one. I have the fabric cut for this to go with um, a kimono in, the, in these colors. I just haven't got it sewn together yet. <laughs> okay. Woohoo! Oh, Sarah, I love my variegated threads also. And that actual thread is this right here. There was the colorway. And this is Madeira Katona 50 weight thread, is what that is. Right there. And check and make sure I have two spools of it. <laughs> I'll make sure they're the, both the same weight. No, I stand corrected. The Sasha Co stitching I did with a 30 weight Madeira Katona. I saw this sitting over by the Sasha Co machine. So this was a 30 weight, and that's what I did the Sasha Co stitching with. This is the exact same colorway but I use the 50 weight to do my hand stitching with. Oops. <laughs> okay. Absolutely everybody. And listen, I'm gonna call it a night tonight. And you may not, you probably see my face is, has been a mess. <laughs> but you can see some of the red spots, you know, the redness coming through on my skin. And what I, what I found, one of my friends here said, if you're self-conscious, because I have um, dermatitis anyway, and when I'm sick, it just accentuates it all. But she showed me how to use a product to take some of the redness out, and that's what I use. And I was not ashamed to say it or anything. Yeah, bare minerals <laughs> with a a Kauki brush or something. And I just put a little bit of that mineral powder on just to take, just helps cover up some of the redness. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Everyone, y'all have a wonderful night and definitely will be on next Friday night, but I'm gonna do my best to be on through the week next week as well. 
and I will be on as much as I can. Good night, everybody. Have a fabulous weekend. Stay warm. Those of you that are in the northern half of this, the United States, it's going to get we're having an Arctic blast coming. Single digit temps. Oh, thank you, Sarah. You're so welcome. And thank you, everybody, for your continued support. It means the world to me. Good night, everyone. I'll see y'all see y'all in a few days. Bye.